I'm really happy to meet you again because uh, you know, I miss you. Like the first time we met, like um, I I think it was last year around this time, and um, and then uh -huh. we met uh, after your Istanbul gig. Uh, uh -huh. and yeah, now we're we're back again. Yeah, and that that feels super cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it's weird that the the. I remember us having a conversation after the Istanbul gig, and that feels like it could be years ago. So much has happened since then. <laughs> it's yeah. actually crazy. Yeah, like like the release of your new album, and of course we'll talk about it a lot. And uh, yeah, but, yeah, like and we also I also briefly mentioned that that Istanbul gig as well through a fan question actually uh, at the end. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So your new album, Hellfire, like it's been out for a, a month and a half now and it's been getting a lot of love and praise and you've been on tour like you have you had been on tour after, before that release as well and it's been going on for a while. How have you been feeling that love after the release of the album? Epic. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. <clears throat> um yeah it feels really 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 good to have this record out it feels um in a lot of ways like it's the you know this feels like the record that we really feel uh proudest of you know like it's it's definitely in my opinion the best executed and the best like delivered and just all of our ideas were just we were more confident, you know, in the in the studio environment. Um, not to say we weren't we weren't confident with the previous two, but I think we didn't really have much experience in the studio setting. So, um, yeah, yeah, really, it feels really, really good. And and to to see like the reception and how people were taking the album in and receiving it is is amazing, you know, and. Yeah, this kind of feels like the the turn of a, you know, a new chapter. Yeah. Whatever that chapter is gonna look like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, personally, that's my. I I love all of your records, obviously, but yeah, I think that's a new pick for you. Uh, and uh, yeah, I I I believe you can only go upwards, like ascending fort after <laughs> after yeah. this. Yeah. And yeah, and. For a band that uh, like spent the majority of its career in the post-pandemic era, like you have been insanely productive and critically successful, and you also admit in previous interviews that the pandemic, in a way, has really actually been really helpful to your creative process. I want to ask how that factor worked its worked its way into the Hellfire, to be specific, to maybe get a comprehensive grasp of the album story, because. It is a hellish period we live in, and the album sounds pretty demented in the best way possible. Um, mm. and, yeah, in short, I think what I mean to ask is, were the recent years a sort of a necessary evil? And how has that necessary evil healed and maybe even taught you? Wow. Um, I think with regards to the first part of that, I think the pandemic, generally speaking, I think not even for musicians, just like shifted or realigned people's priorities to how they should be, you know, like we all had to learn how to live without any of the things that we're normally accustomed to. And yeah, we had to, we had to alter our way of life, you know, for a long period of time. And I think for creatives or for us, as musicians, it meant that things were just far more thought out and considered because, you know, rather than, it didn't really make sense for me at least. And it seemed for the band to just do things for the sake of it anymore. Mm -hmm. And that was something we never really did anyway. But, you know, like, I think when you have what, you know, your livelihood taken away from you for such a long period of time, it, it makes you not take it for granted and it makes you take it as seriously as possible. You know? Um, yeah. Yeah. I hope, I hope that answers your question. 
Yeah, I think I think it does. Yeah, yeah. it's a it's a satisfying one to me. Um, the, there is a sort of maybe this is not fully a concept al album, but there is some some sort of like coherency in the album in the sense that, uh, like, there is, yeah, there are lots of people uh, as Jordi puts it that lots of horrible people in the lyrics that possibly uh, deserve to go through hell. Uh, like and. There's also a common radio team, like uh, in the beginning and in the middle of the record, like uh, in that concept, uh, like how do you decide on that like radio team? How, how it calls connects to the hell hellish team? Uh, how sorry, repeat that last bit. How does how does the radio team and the the hell team, the the, the two pro dominant teams? like in the album Connect, do you think? Hmm. Not, I'm not totally sure. I'm, I'm not totally sure, you know, whether, I mean that in, in terms of like, I'm not, it's, it doesn't have to be a thing of that they do connect. They, they're, they're sort yeah. of relative to each other because of how and where they exist on yeah. the, on the, um, on the record sort of like chronologically but i think um yeah that one's kind of open for debate yeah yeah as it is in most other arts yeah but just like uh yeah i think the the reason i ask is because that's uh hellfire in a way is your like most uh focused in sense of songwriting and um and i want to like I wondered if there's a connection, but like you said, there there doesn't have to be. But um, I want to develop on a specific question, like to better grasp uh, the recording process, um, because I found out in my previous interviews that it can prove this question can, can prove really helpful in processing and understanding the recording process. If you were to select the easiest and hardest songs to record from this album, which two would, would you pick? Ha. <laughs> uh, wow, good question. I, Thank I, you. I don't think, yeah, I think, easiest and hardest. It's, that's a really difficult question. It's a good question, but it's really difficult because, of course, like, all the songs are their own things and, uh, you know, with that comes different sort of variables as to, like, how easy or difficult they are to record. But mm -hmm. um, Dangerous Liaison sort of stands out as one that's quite difficult to record. Yeah, because that is a a difficult song to perform and, and play and get you know right because mm -hmm. um, there's so much to it. But you know, I feel like I could say every single every single song. Um, I think I think the one song that felt pretty like I wouldn't say easy at all, but the one that smelt this felt the smoothest was. Uh, welcome to hell. Mm -hmm. I sort of remember that being pretty, like, you know, did couple takes, cool, lay down next bit, next bit, next bit, and suddenly it was like pretty quickly it sort of formed into something that wasn't too far from what um what's on the record. So yeah, <laughs> I hope that <laughs> answers your question. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's good enough. Um, but I believe uh currently like. Uh, since you're on the tour and stuff, when we last told you're already recording the third record, this record. Uh, do you like right now have any hints where the fourth record is going or any conceptions about the fourth record? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Uh, yeah, we have. <clears throat> you know, we definitely have an idea of what it yeah. might be and what it might look like, but. Until we start moving along a little bit and getting a bit further down the line, then 
it's hard to say, you know, but we have a have a rough idea. <laughs> okay, yeah. Like personally, I'm wondering whether it will be wilder and faster, like which seems like a nearly from an audience standpoint, nearly impossible task from which right, like realizing how insane this record is, but or you'll surprise us and go in the opposite direction, like an album full of ballads, like and like your Taylor Swift cover. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, you never know. Yeah, you never, never know. Because you know, you can like keep pushing a certain thing to a certain direction, or you can just divert and yeah. go somewhere completely else. Um, so we shall see. Stay, stay posted. <laughs> yeah, stay posted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I have actually uh, noted down. We we actually admitted fan questions for this interview as, as well because uh, you have grown a fan base like uh, in the past past couple of years in Turkey as well as you might have noticed in your Istanbul concert. Uh, and uh, the first one uh, is actually a topic we discussed in the last year's interview, but concludes uh, with a more specific question. One thing. I love about your art is your insane music videos. Do you have a personal favorite among those and a personal story to go along with it? Personal favorite? Uh, they're all so good. That's what makes yeah, it they so are. difficult. <laughs> yeah, I love all of them. <coughs> I can choose. I can choose. Like, yeah. You can't or you can? I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I, if I had to pick one. Actually, you know what? I think for me, it's, it's pretty standout. Even though they're all so good. I think the zoo video uh, is, yeah. is, is really, really good. I think that's the... Yeah, so I think by... Even though they're all really, really good, I think the Sugar Zoo video is... Yeah best i think it's really it like stands as its own thing you know i think yeah. it's really really good yeah if you yeah. had to pick one if you had to pick one that you can watch for the rest of your life what would it be well i think it could be welcome to hell because there's lots of details in the animation style and like mm. little details i still notice but like but this okay again applies to all of your videos like uh like in sugar zoo as well like there's so many little details to pick out mm. but uh, as a fan of animations uh in particular i guess i'll go with welcome to hell fair play yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair play, i really like it. yeah yeah thank you but of course again i love all of them Okay, so second fan question. I have no doubt that you have great taste in music. So if you had to mean had the means to form a super group of your dreams from the oh. artists that are still alive, <laughs> who would with, be included in the band? With artists that are still alive. Yeah, that kind of narrows it down at least. Like, yeah, yeah, that's that's a good way of doing it. Because if you didn't say that, it would be impossible. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Pino Palad Pino Paladino on bass. Yeah, cool. Um, Herbie Hancock keys, John McLaughlin guitar. Great. Um, damn. That's tough. It is. That's tough. I'm I'm trying to think. Yeah, but the the three names you picked already are all legends and they would form a sick band. Oh, crazy yeah. good band. We yeah. we were talking about that the other day, like well, I think I've you know, we've had that question in an interview before. And I love that kind of thing because yeah, it's just interesting what you think would actually work. <laughs> You know, because it's not necessarily going to be about the best players, blah blah blah. It's got it's got to be a workable thing, hasn't it? Um, but yeah, I I I'm you know I could be here forever trying to <laughs> yeah. figure that one out. So I'll I'll go for those ones. 
Okay, oh, awesome, awesome. Uh, so, okay, final fan question to close the interview. Like, uh, this is, by the way, this has this question, the specific question was asked by at least five people. <laughs> What memories wow. do you have from your first concert in Istanbul last May? And when do we get to see you again? Wow. And how, how did the fans ask these questions? Was it through your platform? Yeah, yeah, through Instagram and Twitter. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Um, memories of, yeah, we talk about Istanbul regularly, like, that was, it was a special, special few days, and what an amazing place, and what amazing people, and, yeah, it was incredible, I, what was some of my memories, I just remember the show, do you know what, I, I can't really pick out a special moment, it was just like, the whole experience was so good, Like having shame there, and obviously you know us being like pretty good mates, and all our managers were there, and meeting people like you and so many others, and <laughs> the, the the thing that really stands out <laughs> is when we left the venue and we all got in those cabs, like twenty yeah. cabs just left. That that was hilarious to me. We were just like, yeah, yeah, we're going out, yeah, <laughs> we're doing it. That was ridiculous, but I loved it. Um, but yeah, amazing, amazing few days, and I'd love to come back and hopefully we come back and play a show sometime soon. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, like in the recent days, uh, Black Country New World opened up for Nick Cave and the Besties concert here in Istanbul. Maybe like uh, when? When did they do that? Like, uh, well, how many days ago? Five days ago, actually. Oh yeah, so pretty recently. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty recent. I was there. How maybe, was it? Yeah, maybe you do a co-headlining show or something with them. Ah, oh, that'd be epic. Yeah. That'd be good. Stay yeah. posted. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh -huh. I can't wait. Okay, thank you, Morgan. I, I that's all of my questions. Right. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. It, thanks for like take, like choose choosing to do this with me again. Like. Sure. That's so kind of you. That's lovely, kind, and hope we'll meet again soon. Yeah, definitely. My pleasure. Take care. You too. Take it easy. Take it easy.